computer. Okay, uh, today we have uh, Johnny Temple and Ibrahim Ahmad from Akashic Books. Johnny is the publisher and um, Ibrahim is the editorial director. Uh, Akashic Books is one of the largest and most innovative independent presses in the country, uh, publishing over 30 titles a year. They were founded in 1997 uh, with a mission to de-gentrify the literary world. So I'm going to uh, ask uh, Johnny and Ibrahim, maybe Johnny first, to tell, tell us a little bit about Akashic, your mission, and your history. Great. Um, thank you, Phil. Um, we started publishing in 1997. Uh, at, at the time, I was a full-time musician. I'm still a musician, and I still play music, but I'm not a full-time musician anymore. At that time, I was actually making, earning a pretty good living playing bass guitar in a band called Girls Against Boys, which in the 1990s had a nice run. Um, we put out a bunch of records and developed a decent following. And in the mid 90s, I, my band was at the right place at the right time soon after the band Nirvana had exploded and all the um, major record labels were trying to sign up other sort of noisy rock bands and my band got caught up in that and we got a really great record deal and used some of that money to start Akashic Books with a couple of friends um, who, who Bobby Sullivan and Mark Sullivan who left the company early on to start families. Uh, but I think that one of my initial intentions was to try to take some of the excitement um, and the energy and the electricity around popular music, rock music, hip hop music, and try to publish books in a way that would um, harness some of that same energy. I think music hits people more directly than books do and more immediately and viscerally, but, uh, uh, but I, I still think that, that uh, books sometimes are looked at as a sort of elite art form and that that's here comes our mission to this reverse gentrification of the literary world, which is the idea of trying to publish books in a way to reach uh, more of the more people. A lot of people in um, mainstream publishing complain that pe people don't read enough anymore. But when they say people don't read enough anymore, they're often talking about a really narrow, overeducated part of the po population. And so we're, we're trying to sort of uh, be a part of publishing books, not just books that themselves are exciting, but to try to publish them and promote them in exciting ways and just try to try to build a more literate public, um, a public more engaged in, in exciting books. We publish about 40 books a year. The heart and soul of the company is literary fiction, but at this point, our list is much broader than that. We have a lot of books by musicians. We have political nonfiction books. We publish a, a small bit of poetry, small bit of art books, but uh, our list is fairly, is, is fairly eclectic and um, we've had some nice successes along the way. Um, Ibrahim, uh, in July, I think of uh, 2018, there was a lovely article about you, about a day in the life of a publisher, published by The Millions. Um, maybe take us through, you know, a day in the life of, of uh, an independent literary publisher. Uh, so, firstly, I'll say that uh, our our days, these days at least, are are a little more unusual than uh, than they have been in 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 the more recent past. Um, but I think the you know everything that we do is sort of predicated around. Um, what we like to think is an intuitive approach to publishing. Uh, all of us at Akashic, um, we, we, before joining the company, had little to no experience in the publishing world. So we've sort of made things up as we've, you know, as we've, as we've gone. And um, on the one hand, that's been, it's, it's been quite beneficial to just sort of uh, follow our, instinct and trust our gut impulses um and you know i think the as, a, as an editorially driven driven company um the fact is is that the books that we publish sort of 
they, they dictate to us what we need to do with them. Um, and just to sort of make this a little bit more concrete, you know, I, I'd like to think that um, our, our publishing program, our, our biggest imperative is not to be redundant with other publishers. And there are plenty of wonderful publishers out there doing great work. Um, and we don't, we don't need to, you know, be stepping on anyone else's turf or copying uh, what they're doing. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for work that uh, broadens and expands the literature. And I think that impulse to, um, you know, publish either underrepresented voices or new voices, that informs every aspect of, of the company. Um, looking at an individual day, I mean, the, the, I think one of the things about independent publishing in particular is that by necessity, everybody has to wear many different hats. And so while, you know, my title might be editorial director, um, chances are that I'll spend equal parts on a given day doing publicity work or chasing down invoices or uh, dealing with metadata or analyzing sales or building uh, relationships with retailers and booksellers. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I think um, balancing all the different moving parts and juggling all these different areas simultaneously, that's what, that's what it is to both run a small business and to be uh, fully immersed in the, in the independent publishing world. Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, from the point of view of a writer who, uh, doesn't have any connections and who, you know, maybe is just finishing, uh, their first major book, whether it be a novel or a memoir, uh, give us a little insight into the kinds of decision-making processes that, that you undergo, because in so many ways, I think publishing is opaque to, especially to new writers. We don't, they, there's no, there's not a lot of uh, uh, commonly held knowledge. And uh, so tell us a little bit about how, you know, a book comes to you and what happens. So when the book, before the book actually comes to us, a query letter comes, comes to us, whether it's from the author herself or her literary agent contacting us, or maybe it's a publisher who publishes her in England um, who reaches out to us. So the, we can be approached from any n number of different directions. And we are approached many times every day from people who have books. And so the first hurdle <laughs> that a book faces is just to be accepted into our um, in, 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 onto our reading list. And for that to ha happen, one of our four editors that who comprise our editorial team has to express interest in the book. Those editors are me, uh, Ibrahim, Johanna Ingalls at Akashic, and Aaron Petrovich, who isn't actually an editor. He's the, he runs our production department, but he's a member of the editorial team. Uh, so one of the four of us has to sort of be uh, intrigued by the query letter because we work so hard and we don't have a lot of it, it it takes so much time to evaluate manuscripts that unfortunately we don't just sort of we don't have a blind submission policy or uh, we actually agree to look at very few books because we we simply don't have a lot of time for evaluating manuscripts that you're going to end up turning away so one of us has to be kind of interested in what the query letter is saying. And then, okay, so I read it, we send it around and I say, I'm interested. And so I say to the author or their agent, um, yes, go ahead and send us the manuscript. And then I, as the person who expressed interest in it, am responsible for doing the first read. And, uh, usually I'll do the first read and, and I'll say, okay, this book is very good, but it's not, it's not for us. That's usually what happens. Um, because you're, you're, you're waiting for book, a book that either completely knocks your socks off that you just think that the writing is phenomenal or the story is phenomenal. Or if there's some sort of 
compelling commercial reason to publish it. Um, okay, this author is very well known and they're coming to Akashic for reasons X, Y, and Z, but there's someone, they're a known quantity who comes to us and we think we can be very su successful with their work. It may not be our favorite work ever, um, but, it, but, but we love the person or we love the writer, we wanna support them. Um, though I'm getting a little bit, I'm, 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 I'm getting a little bit, I'm straying a little bit because really basically someone has to fall in love with the book or there has to be, and that's usually nine times out of 10, that's kind of how we acquire the book is that one of us sort of falls in love with the book and then you start trying to convince the others to sign it on. Then the others either have to read it or they have to say, based on what you said, I'm going to go with your judgment on this. Let's go ahead and make an offer to the, to, to, to the author. And so that's, that's really basic. Basically, someone has to fall in love with it. Um, unless there's these other commercial considerations, which I started talking about, but I was doing a bad job of explaining what I meant. Um, and, 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 and the fact of the matter is, is as I say, nine out of 10 of our, our, acquisitions are not based on like primarily commercial reasons um we of course oh go, go ahead i i just wanted to dwell for a moment on the the mechanics of the process the the you know the this sort of passive sitting and waiting for a manuscript to land in our inbox that is you know that that is one path to publication but i think it's important to mention that there are several other um, paths to publication um, that sometimes involve, um, that, that often involve relationships or being part of a literary community or really being in the right place at the right time. And so much of what we do uh, in every aspect of the business, it's, it, you know, everything about this business is predicated on interpersonal relationships with other people, whether it's, you know, people in the media, whether it's readers who we're directly engaging with, or, or writers. And so we attend different public literary festivals, we travel uh, across the country, and in fact, across the world, uh, meeting with readers and writers, and even participating in say, you know, the Wilkes Creative Writing Program or um, other conferences. It's a great way to just develop relationships with, with writers. And, you know, it's, it's, it's also um, the case that I think some of the, the, the best books that have been brought to us have not been brought to us by agents they've been brought to us by other writers, um, sometimes writers who we've published. And obviously those people, they know the, you know, the, the, the idiosyncratic nature of our list and our own editorial quirks and interests. And, you know, it's, it, it, it's certainly the case that if some, somebody like Marlon James, whose debut novel we, we published over a decade ago, if Marlon were to come to Johnny or, or me and say, you have to check out this submission by this young writer, that manuscript would immediately jump to the top of our reading pile. And those types of um, relationships are absolutely crucial and paramount to how not just the Kashik operates, but I think how the book business operates as well. Um, and you know, the, I, I think there is value in, um, you know, looking at unsolicited queries, and I'm glad we do it, because um, occasionally we find those diamonds in the rough. But I also think um, that, you know, it's, it's just as important for us to be out there in the world, both, you know, going after writers, people who we're interested in individually, who, you know, we, we may want to try to fish a book out of, or otherwise just being open to meeting other, other writers who might fit our, our publishing program? Um, I, one of the hardest things I think for us to do uh, is, is to describe uh, in using just generic adjectives what it is we like. Um, maybe if you guys could talk about a particular project, uh, maybe one that's come to you recently that jumped out that you you really enjoyed or maybe even had some 
uh, differing opinions about and, uh, you know, describe how that particular book got received and handled and edited, you know, as, as, a, as an example, which might help, uh, help writers understand the whole process better. And think of a good example. Um, there's plenty of examples. Um, I can jump in with one while you're while, while you're mulling it over. And this this example is um, with an author who we've published previously, but the 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 nature of the work is such that you know the the, the actual novel that this writer has been working on, he has been writing it almost as a dialogue that the two of us have been having over the years. So th there's this Iranian writer by the name of Salar Abdo, who um, he, you know, he's, he splits his time between Tehran in Iran and uh, here in New York City. And he, for the last five or six years, has been spending um, most of his time in Iraq and in Syria uh, basically, he has embedded himself with the, the the militias that are fighting against ISIS, the Shia militias, and he has sort of gained their trust. And he, um, you know, initially went there to work on uh, a documentary film that was commissioned and ended up coming back, fortunately, in one piece and has written what I, to my mind, is one of the great war novels um, that I've ever encountered, um, sort of, you know, following in the tradition, in a, in a very American tradition in some ways of, you know, the sort of, you know, everyone from Tim O'Brien to Hemingway to Kevin Powers. Um, but he, he sort of takes that Western paradigm and completely recenters the conversation in the Middle East and gives agency to um, you know a population that has not really had uh, the opportunity to speak for itself in in the West and 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 this book I mean it's 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 pretty remarkable over the last five six years as he's been writing it we've been you know meeting usually once a month and just talking about the issues and the ideas that um, that that kind of undergird the the work, and seeing the finished result, it you know it's I I, I don't know it's it, it's almost the the ideal editorial relationship for me. I feel like I've been in dialogue about the the the, the text since he started writing the thing. And, um, and it's a very unusual sensation as well. I don't often, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not typically in a position where I'm working with an author as they're, you know, dealing with the, the conceptual architecture of their work. And I have to say, it's been one of the most rewarding editorial experiences that I've ever had, um, because, you know, it started on the, on the level of ideas, but then, you know, the, the ideas don't overwhelm the plot. It's a page turning, you know, um, you know, down in the trenches war novel, uh, but with a really solid philosophical foundation um, that, you know, it's, it's, it's just been, it, it's, it's been an entirely unique and rewarding editorial experience for me. Um, and one that, you know, every so often when you have an experience like that, it, as an editor, it reinvigorates you and it brings you uh, a level of appreciation of the work that you're doing. Um, Cause you know, again, there's a difference between um, you know, copy editing a manuscript and obviously that's very important. And then doing that sort of macro level, you know, construction that has to happen before even a single sentence has been written. Um, so that's, that's some, that's a process that I just recently emerged out of. And now we're, uh, we're going to be publishing this novel entitled Out of Mesopotamia um, this autumn. And so we're beginning to discuss our promotional plans and so forth um, and, and move into the next uh, phase with this, with this work. Out of Mesopotamia. And the author's name is? Salar Abdo. S-A-L-A-R-A-B-D-O-H. 
Wow. Well, we'll have to I'll have to look for that when it comes out. That sounds very exciting. Um, what do you see uh, as the future for for Akashic, and and also in terms of your vision of of the way the industry uh, it has moved and is moving? I have never been a good prognosticator. <laughs> nor have I had the opportunity to use that word many times. <laughs> um, um, uh, I, 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 I tend to steer clear of projecting what the future looks like either for Akashic or for the literary world in general. I've always had trouble with that. Like in five years, where do you want to be? I, I, for, I, I, I want to keep doing what we're doing and doing it better. <laughs> that's my, that's my, old, there is not anything we're not yet doing that I want to be doing. Um, so it's, you know, it's a wonderful thing to publish a, 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 a to be a book publisher. Uh, I, when I was a, a musician, one of the things that was frustrating when I was a full-time musician, one of the things that was frustrating for me was it was just 360, my life was 360 degrees of music and it was rock music. It was the type, it was the genre of music that my band was playing. And we would play benefit concerts to support certain social justice causes and whatnot. So there was a little bit of a room for being sort of, involved in political movements or social movements, but it still it was a very narrow experience. Whereas being a book publisher um, is this privilege. I, we can publish an esoteric novel by um, Amiri Baraka, um, you know, reissue an Amiri Baraka novel, or we can publish a book called Drawing Autism about using art um, as, a, as a teaching tool um, uh, with students on the uh, autism spectrum, you know, or we can pub publish a book with by Ron Kovic, uh, uh, you know, a disabled war veteran. Um, there's so much that we can do and so many in in interests that are fed by being a, a publisher of an eclectic list uh, like ours. So my own interests are constantly being, um, you know, full just like peaked and, and, and prodded. And so I wish that our authors earned more money. I wish that I earn more money and I wish my staff earn more money. Um, and the way to do that is to sell more books. And so I want to get better at selling books. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, sorry for the long non-answer. It's a lot, a lot of words to not answer your question. <laughs> No, actually, of, of course, it's it's a it's one of those questions that we uh, that we get we get asked a lot of times on that panel, and uh, uh, and I think you answered it beautifully by just saying you know the, the future is unknown, and in fact, it's all about the process. It's, it's about the process, and it's about the books. And I, I will say, like sort of what's when Ibrahim was talking about out of Mesopotamia, for him and Ibrahim, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But you find a book like that and that you, you were involved in, in the sort of birth of the book and the development of the book and you love the writing and it's an important book. That's like, that's like 18 months minimum worth of high level motivation to do the job that we do. And so you have these incredible books that are just like, it's, it's, it's like filling up a tank of gas or something like that in terms of one's motivation to, to to publish these books and the publishing business is a difficult business trying to promote a book can feel like just banging your head against the wall it's almost impossible to promote books it's so so you need this you, you need your tank to always be filled by incredible works of art or you know works of political significance on the on the sort of providing a glimmer of optimism about the business side of the industry. And obviously the publishing industry has been marked by a series of expansions and contractions that, you know, most recently have 
has resulted in, in, in you know, various rounds of consolidation where, um, you know, the publishing, the corporate publish, publishing nexus um, in Midtown Manhattan now consists of five major, um, you know, corporate behemoths. Um, one glimmer of, of hope is that in the last six weeks or so, um, a new online bookstore called Bookshop, uh, founded by Andy Hunter, who's also responsible for um, bringing the world Lit Hub and Electric Lit. And he's also the publisher of Catapult and um, Soft Skull and Counterpoint. He just launched um, this website, Bookshop, at bookshop.org. And in the last month, that website has raised over $400,000 um, that is going to go directly to independent bookstores around the country, um, which is just an, an incredible amount. Basically, 30% of every sale um, supports the independent book selling ecosystem. Um, and, you know, when faced with online retail hegemony elsewhere, it's great that there is an alternative and that people can support their local bookstores, their local communities, even while shopping online. And so I'm really heartened by... Oh. Um, and I think it's in part due to the virus and all of the ramifications of the virus, uh, but this has been one of those few bright spots uh, of 2020 so far. Okay, well, thank you so much, Johnny Temple, Ibrahim Ahmad of Akashic Books. Um, we look forward to all your new books coming out, and uh, we thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye.